much, Mr Gray. Um, I would have to declare an interest, having spent over 30 years as a consultant in the NHS and being married to someone who's a GP, and therefore, um, naturally, it affects us. But it also affects many of our colleagues. Um, the first thing to hit was very much the lifetime tax allowance changes. And what I saw in my husband's practice was GPs being driven out at about 57, 58, who had no intentions of retiring early, but when they were having their annual meeting with their uh, accountants, were warned that because of the taper, they were going to suddenly reach high marginal tax rates of well over 50%. And naturally, that is not very attractive. And what we're having, exactly as has been laid out by other members, is we're losing the people with the most expertise. We're losing the people who train the new people. And it's important that we don't get carried away thinking that the NHS is about machinery or buildings or gizmos and gadgets. Every one of those gizmos and gadgets is used by a person. It's people in the NHS who care or treat or diagnose people. And the problem is, is if you don't have the workforce, all your waiting times that you like to stand up and talk about are completely shot. And so workforce issues, which all four UK nations face, are being made worse by these problems. Now, many people will feel, oh, you know, a kind of one million pension pot allowance, you know, what a great problem to have. And it is a great problem. But particularly in general practice, where GPs reach a kind of high salary quite early, unlike in hospital, where it takes you 15 or 16 years to become a consultant, they took out what were called added years and they bought extra service. Because we graduate late, we end up with the issue that it's actually very difficult to work 40 years to have half salary pension. So people bought added years and I can tell you, we looked at it twice. We could never afford it. And we have the same issue that we have with WASPI, that we have with Hewlett Packard, that we have with Magnox, with all the other pension issues lying around, is you're expected to commit to a pension when you're in your early 20s. And when you get to the other end, the goalposts have moved. And this is hitting you when you actually can't do anything about it other than bail out. And that's what we've already seen. So the lifetime tax allowance limit has already driven consultants out before the age of 60, GPs out before the age of 60. But what's much more acute now is the tapering annual tax allowance. As was said, it was introduced in 2010 really to avoid tax avoidance and, and it being a way of gaming the system. And it was introduced at over a quarter of a million. Now, senior medics in the NHS are probably the highest paid people who are not running a business they are pay as you earn. They don't have the games of writing this, that and the other off, of paying themselves in weird ways. They just get their pay slip and the tax is taken. So they are not in the tax avoidance game that perhaps was being thought of when this was brought in, when looking at the, the commercial sector. The commercial sector is defined contribution and not defined benefit. And it's the way these limits interact with the NHS and probably indeed other public service schemes that causes the problem. The annual allowance was reduced in 2011 to 50,000 and then to 40,000 in 2014. But if you're caught by the taper, the, it can go right down to having a 10,000 allowance. And it's the way this threshold at 110,000 not 150,000, which was the impression given by the Chancellor in the last Treasury questions on the 21st of May. And they hit a cliff edge, as has been highlighted by other members, that all of a sudden they're caught into a system that actually means they're being taxed over and over on the same income. The problem is it particularly affects consultants who are paid around or over 110,000 and full-time GPs. So what we're already going to have, because people have been caught out, they've been hit by these bills, they're talking to their colleagues, is people are actually refusing promotion. People are actually refusing to take on all the extra duties that are required in the NHS to become an education director, to become the manager of the junior doctors, to become a, a clinical lead. Because anything that would bring extra income for doing extra work 
can suddenly push you in, in this. And we can't see, doctors can't see that they're going to be hit. So they're not able to kind of manage it over the year. The bill arrives and some of them have been absolutely horrendous. As has been said, the average bill is 18,500, but many have been up towards 100,000. And the problem is, I don't care what you're paid, you don't just have that lying around in a bank account. So the problem is, even trying to pay that bill has caused terrible problems. They're paying it either from already taxed income or by taking a loan where they would pay interest back on it, or they're using scheme pays, which is that they're actually borrowing from their pension pot to pay off this bill. And the problem is they have to pay that back. They have to pay it back with actually quite non-commercial interest rates, and then that still reduces their final pension pot, because the money has technically not been in it for the same length of time. Happily. Uh, I was talking to one of the uh, BMA um, consultants who said that um, an actuary had done some modelling and said that somebody working 48 hours a week that had to borrow money off their pot at the end would have a lower pension than somebody working 24 hours a week because the penalties were so severe? Um, I, I thank the Honourable Member from Poole for both getting this debate and for that point. I haven't seen that actuarial working, but it highlights how completely bonkers this scheme is. And so when people are looking at not doing anything extra they will be doing everything to stay below the threshold and not be sucked into it. Because once you are sucked into it, it literally is a Kafka-esque spiral that pulls you down to ridiculous levels. Now, one of the problems for GPs in England is they're not getting their pension statements because of issues in, I think it's Capita that are running that at the moment, and we know how well they've run some of the other services they've been asked to produce. Non pensionable income is counted, which seems very weird when this is talking about pension tax allowances. And the other thing is that the notional growth in someone's pension pot is being counted as income. Well, I'm sorry, income is income. It's what you're actually earning or receiving, not something that might be sitting in your pension pot to gain in 10 years. And all of that is totally catching doctors out because they can't see it and as they have begun to suffer this, all they can do is make sure that they are staying below the threshold. So what has been highlighted already um, by the former uh, junior health minister, who as we said, we spent many hours in here, 80% will change practice. And that is leading to people to refuse anything that will lift up their income. To refuse promotion, to refuse extra duties, but also to refuse extra sessions. And the problem is many of them in their early to mid-50s are actually talking about retirement. And that would just be cataclysmic. And already 30% in that survey. Between six and seven years ago, we were suddenly hit with a doubling of our pension contributions. From six odds percent to about 14%. So that meant suddenly my take-home pay went down. And here we are, six or seven years later, being punished because our pension pots are too big. It's completely bizarre. Now, the problem is we can't afford these people to retire. Every time we discuss workforce, we talk about recruitment and we talk about retention. These are the people who will train the new recruits. And these are the people who we need to hold on to. As has already been mentioned, this is not devolved. But the impact of it is devolved in health. So it's only this place that can sort out this mess and pensions. I'm really disappointed it isn't Treasury listening to this. And I hope at some point we have a debate where they are. Because I know that obviously the Minister is going to have to gather our voices and take them to the Treasury. I think we'd rather have that directly. But this has to be sorted or literally there will be an absolute workforce meltdown within the next two years.